To understand how people deal with stressful situations, we must understand how they perceive these situations. It's important to explore the human mind under pressure and how rash assumptions we make about each other can create drama in our lives. Our upcoming speaker, Jim Deacon, Chief Operating Officer of Leadership Masters, our platinum sponsor, will share his viewpoints on real life drama, a three-dimensional exploration of human beings under pressure and the blind spots created by expectations and assumptions. The stage is all yours, Jim. Thank you. <clears throat> if I could ask, uh, actually, I am not Jim Deacon. I'm Scott Eck of uh, Leadership Masters. Uh, and is the clicker up here? Right? Can you bring that to me, Mark? Could I ask the members of the audience to please temporarily move down to the front three rows? You're going to need to observe the behavior that you see on the stage as closely as possible for you to get any value from it. And then uh, you're free to return back to your, your normal seats. Thank you, Mark. So as we're moving down, uh, again, my name is Scott Eck. Uh, I'm from Leadership Masters. Uh, Jim Deacon is my partner. Jim was, the, uh, was one of the key designers of real life drama as closely as possible. Right, so there I am. Uh, these are some of the organizations, uh, both Fortune 500, smaller private concerns, educational institutions, and governments that we work for and have received awards from. And we thank the Education 2.0 Conference for adding to that list. Um, earlier today, we showed you an example of leadership theater with the Shackleton experience. We hope that you had a chance to experience that that's an example of leadership theater, as I say, which is not pioneered by us. It was actually pioneered in the 1930s and 40s by a, a uh, psychologist by the name of Jacob Moreno, who developed what he called the psychodramatic effect. And his theory was that learning can be extraordinarily powerful when it's combined with the theater, facts, music, visual learning, oral learning, kinetic learning. And that learning anchors can be so much more deeply embedded if we uh, apply ourselves theatrically to all of those learning modalities, learning orally, kinetically, visually, etc. And as Matt was talking about in his earlier presentation, the uh, advent of technological expertise has led to the loss of uh, emotional intelligence in the world. We are trying to, in our own way, balance those scales. So that was, the Shackleton experience was leadership theater, the psychodramatic effect. This piece is called real life drama or three-dimensional action learning. In three-dimensional action learning, what we do is we take actual case studies and we create them physically on a stage. What you learn from a paper case study is nothing compared to what you can learn from actually seeing a moment in an organization's life played out, or a family's life played out, or a community's life played out. The scene that we're going to show you today, which is part of many scenes we have in real life drama, is a scene, a scenario, a case study that actually happened with one of our clients who could not understand why they were losing uh, talented people every day of the organization's life. They, kept, they, they were attracting talent, but they were losing talent at a much greater rate. So with that, let's dive right in. This scene is called Sorry I Missed You. Sorry I Missed You is the story of a senior HR director by the name of Tammy Newland. Where is Tammy? Here comes Tammy. Tammy leads the HR operation for a publicly traded company called Fair Foods, a food and beverage company named after its founder, Jim Fairbanks. Fair Foods has been growing at a remarkable rate of speed over the past two years. And all that speed is the reason why Tammy is thankful to have an executive assistant as efficient and effective as Joanne Banks. Joanne has been with Fair Foods uh, for about two years, all of that time has been spent as Tammy's executive assistant. Joanne, like her boss Tammy, is extremely intelligent, intuitive, and talented. But because of uncertainty and pressure and speed, 
Both women make assumptions about the organization, each other, and themselves that cause critical things to be missed. See if you can determine what assumptions, both positive and negative, are being made by these two key players in this scenario. There are two other players as well. One is seen, one is unseen. The third player that is seen, his name is Garrett Tenenbaum. See if you can determine his assumptions, both positive and negative, about the organization and these two women. And then there's one other unseen character by the name of LaShonda Banks. See if you can actually determine her assumptions without ever meeting her. Okay, with that, we'll ask Tammy to excuse herself from the stage. Pay close attention to the behaviors being exhibited on the stage. These are good people trying to do their best for their families, their communities, and their organizations. This is Real Life Drama. Morning, Joanne. Morning, Tammy. Your 2 o'clock oh. meeting with Jim Fairbanks and the ELT has been moved to 9.30. 20 minutes from now, naturally, that blew up your day. Oh, naturally, it's Monday. So then I assume you rebuilt my day? I rebuilt your day. <laughs> then I rebuilt your week. Oh. Uh, did you leave me time to finish typing up the recru recruiting selection and onboarding process? I finished it up last night. All you have to do is clean it up and send it upstairs. <sighs> Although, you shouldn't have to send it upstairs. It's your decision. They should let you make it. <sighs> Preaching to the choir. Um, oh, where are we on taking HR technology, budget, and data out of HR operations? This just came down from LaShonda and her team. She thinks it's a bad idea, page five. <sighs> just tell me what it says. According to LaShonda, if you create a separate function for technology, budget, and data, nobody from HR will ever talk to those people. Nobody talks to them now. Hell, what's the difference? What are we doing, Joanne? Growing way too fast, making way too many mistakes, not being honest about any of it. And P.S., it's also your decision to take tech, budget, and data out of operations, just like it's your decision to roll out a new recruiting and onboarding process. I know. But Joanne. they should just let you make those decisions. I know. This is Tammy Newland. Yes, LaShonda. Yes. Um, uh, well, my day got blown up when Fairbanks rescheduled, so. Yes, Joanne called your EA and rescheduled us for Thursday at 3 o'clock. Yes, I read page five. I just think HR operations has too much on its plate. Yeah, let's uh, revisit it when we meet on Thursday. Uh, today I've got recruiting and onboarding on deadline, so get busy. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tatanda. Wow. You must be great at charades. Oh, uh, Pictionary is my gold medal sport. <laughs> What's going on with Tatanda? Oh, same old, same old. She doesn't trust us. She doesn't trust me. We had a disagreement about a year ago over how the HR service desk should be run, and instead of fighting it out with me, she took it all the way up to Fairbanks. He got mad, of course, that we weren't working these things out between ourselves, and then somehow all of that ended up being my fault. And meanwhile, the HR service desk still isn't working right, but now neither of us wants to fix it. It's just bad blood. Did you ever talk to her and try to smooth it all out? No. Anyway, let me get into this recruiting and onboarding process. Uh, before you do that, I want you to meet a young man that I think would be a good fit for the project management team. A uh, replacement for Lisa Green? Oh, nobody can replace Lisa Green. That girl could do it all. She was a magical creature. <laughs> she certainly is. Who got Lisa, by the way? Where did she go? Uh, Minneapolis? General Foods. Uh, yeah, sure, send him in. What's his name? Uh, Garrett Tenenbaum. Here's his CV. You know, you're handing me an awful lot of paper today. Oh, well, I know how you like to crumple it up or <laughs> set fire to it. Or both. <laughs> Garrett Tenenbaum. Got it. Go. Tammy Newland. Garrett Tenenbaum. Hi, Garrett. I remember you from meetings and stuff. Whose team are you on? LaShonda Banks. Oh. Um, 
And I understand you're interested in joining the project management team, is that right? Yes, either the project management team or your team. Joanne tells me there's an opening on your staff as well. I hadn't realized we'd lost anyone. Um, anyway, how long have you been with us, Garrett? A little over eight months. Wow, okay. And what do you think of the onboarding process? To be honest, there were some bumps and bruises, but to be fair, you were bringing on a lot of new staff when I joined the company, and I don't think your onboarding process was built to sustain so many people. <laughs> yeah, we're reinventing it right now. I know. That's one of the reasons why I'd like to be assigned to your team. I'm really good at people logistics. Hmm. And you felt like you weren't living up to your potential on LaShonda's team? Too much politics. We spend more time trying to accommodate you know, people in power positions than we do actually building stuff. I like building things that help people. I'm not doing that. Got it. Okay, Garrett, um, let me talk to all the people I need to speak to, and then Joanne will be in touch. And if not the project management team, perhaps your team. Let me find out who's leaving from my team first. I honestly don't even know myself. <laughs> Thanks, Tammy. Appreciate your time. You bet. Do we really want someone from LaShonda's team down here in the trenches with us? You absolutely do. Maybe he is the common ground that gets you two talking. We talk. We just don't talk about anything important. Hmm. He also mentioned that there was an opening on my team. I hadn't realized we'd lost anyone. What was all that about? Garrett would be brilliant as your EA. Well, he would also be brilliant in project management. Please don't tell me you're leaving. That's a standard two weeks notice, but I can stay a month if you need me to. Okay, it'll cost you a going away party, of uh, course, an expensive one. Joanne, I, I had no idea you weren't happy here. I mean, I mean, we weren't great together. We're great. What happened? Nothing happened. That's the problem, Tammy. We don't create anything here. We just react, put out fires, go to endless meetings. Now, I'm like, Garrett, I need to build stuff. Well, why didn't you tell me? I've been telling you for over a year. But you've been putting out fires and going to endless meetings and not fighting with LaShonda. Look, it's going to be OK. It'll all be OK. <sighs> Nothing feels OK right now. Wait, didn't we say we would talk about this? We said we'd put something on the calendar, right? That was over a year ago. Then, about eight months ago, I brought it up again. Then, three months ago, you, you just never have time. Because you're always overwhelmed because they won't let you take tech, budget, and data off your plate because they don't let you make your own decisions. But, I mean, we're doing great work here. We're building stuff all the time. No, we're fixing stuff all the time, then telling ourselves the story that we're building stuff, that we're making a difference. We are making a difference, though. We're building this company. Are we? We're not talking to each other, and we're not making decisions. I mean, what can we really build? Look, that's the tunnel we're in. I'm just, I'm not seeing any light. Wow. Wow. I just, I can't believe you're leaving us. It just doesn't seem possible. I mean, who's getting you? Where are you going? Lisa Green? Uh. No, no, she's a magical creature. Plus, they let her make her own decisions. General foods. Man, those guys are kicking our butts. Oh, for now. Let's see. Are you going to be able to survive in Minneapolis? <laughs> well, as long as I can be creative, as long as I can make a difference, I can survive anywhere. You better get going. Meeting with Fairbanks in five minutes. Oh, LaShonda will be there. Does she know that one of her guys wants to work for us? She knows. Talk to her about it. It's time. I'm going to need a month. Tell Lisa. I'm telling her I'm mad at her. I already told her I figured you would need a month. <laughs> no, but I am going to need a going away party. OK, okay. an expensive one. Shrimp and hors d'oeuvres <laughs> and all that, OK? 
Go, go, you'll be late. Walk with me to the meeting. Somehow I feel like I'm seeing you for the very first time. Okay. No, we can talk about you and LaShonda. <laughs> oh, I'd rather talk about the shrimp and hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> <laughs> Applause for these amazing players, please. So this is an actual case, something that was happening to a client of ours in all uh, business units, in all areas of the organization. They were losing good people every single day, and they couldn't figure out why. As uh, Joanne says, we're not creating anything. We're just fixing stuff and telling ourselves the story that we're being creative. In life, there are facts and stories. Facts are the elements of truth that we find in any given situation. Stories are the lies we tell ourselves to feel better about the facts. So let's just look at some of the assumptions that are driving the behaviors, actions, and results in this scene. And just call out the positive assumptions between Tammy and Joanne. What are some of their positive assumptions about each other? Joanne is, knows that Tammy can do it. Joanne knows that Tammy can handle anything. Other, other assumptions. They are being honest with each other. Other assumptions about these two. They, def they deeply care about each other. You can see, you can feel the connection there. Other positive assumptions. They try to support each other. Others. All good. But we're losing a valuable employee. So then what negative assumptions are in play between these two? Call them out. There's a miscommunication, not necessarily a lack of communication. There's two different perspectives going on here. Tammy thinks that everything's fine. She is not seeing what's going on with someone that she deeply cares about. Does this ever happen in real life? Does it happen all the time, every single day? but we don't see it so much of the time because we're so busy with all of the things we have to manage, including our fears, that we don't notice. What other negative assumptions are in play? They are actually productive. They are actually productive, and that's a negative. Yeah, and that's a negative. What other negative assumptions are in play? Right, so I can't reframe this any better. So say it again, please. They're assuming the worst in each other's teams when it comes to their miscommunication. And that creates silos. So Tammy's assuming that LaShonda's team is either not doing what they're supposed to be doing or are counterproductive. And can we assume, or can you assume, that LaShonda's team, or LaShonda thinks the same of Tammy's team? Yes, that's what I heard. And Joanne knows the reality, which is what? Uh, that they need to sit down and have a conversation. Because they're all good people trying to do their best for themselves, their teams, their communities, their families. They are achievers. They are achievers. This is an achiever trap. Any other negative assumptions at play here? Do, yeah, go ahead. An underlying gender and racial conversation going on. There could be. There could be. I, I think we, that might be an assumption that goes beyond what's happening between those two women. But let's table that for now. In this scene, do the negative assumptions outweigh the positive assumptions? How many in this audience think that there are more negative assumptions at play than positive assumptions at play? Okay, and how many think that there are more positive than negative? Okay, so if there were more positive assumptions at play, Joanne would not leave. but there are more negative assumptions. And despite the fact that she cares so much for Tammy, cares for Tammy's career, cares for Tammy as a human being, cares deeply for this woman who has been her partner, 
her negative assumptions about the future outweigh the positive, and so we lose a valuable, intuitive, intelligent, brilliant, efficient, effective employee. And this happens in all areas of the world every single day. We lose people when things like this happen. What is the level of truth being shared between all the players? And can you cite examples of the level of truth? Let's start with Tammy. On a scale of 1 to 10, in your opinion, just shout it out. What is Tammy's level of truth, either speaking the truth to herself or to others? Three? Okay, so, so you think it's a four, and tell me the reason why again. I'm trying to reframe it like this. Uh, because she doesn't read the paper, which like um, her, and Tammy gave it to her. So she, uh, Joanne gave it to her the paper. She didn't read it. She said, I just, oh, just tell me what it says. So she's truthful about that. Okay, so she's truthful about, uh, so, so on a certain level, she's truthful about not having enough time or headspace to even read this report. Just tell me what it says on page five. Okay, so there's a, there's a level of truth, but you still just give her a four. Three, I would say. Three. Yeah. It's gone down in just this conversation. On a scale of one to ten, Tammy's level of truth in this, just in this scenario. Other opinions? Three, four, any fives? Any sixes? Okay, on the same, in the back. One. Oh, we got another one. Any other ones? Interesting. But does Tammy think she's a truthful person? Yes, she does. Now, how about Joanne? What's jo on a scale of 1 to 10, what's Joanne's level of truth? 7. 8. 8. 8, 9. 6. Look at the disparity, though, between the two. Both on the same page, both care deeply about each other, both care deeply about their futures, both care deeply about the organization. Interesting. So I'm a little over time, but we would ask what stories are being told, because there are stories being told on both sides. And then there's Garrett Tenenbaum to that we have to deal with, who comes in with nothing but positive assumptions. He's coming from LaShonda's team. And who organized that? Joanne. Because Joanne is trying to help both teams and herself. But Joanne's gone. She's gone to General Foods. Those guys are kicking our butts, Tammy says. Yeah, you're kicking your own butt. And finally, this is the question we ask our clients whether they be Fortune 500s, whether they be private organizations, whether they be educational institutions, because in the education space, we are losing thousands of brilliant teachers every day. This situation is no different than what we're seeing in our classrooms, in our institutions of higher education, primary schools, secondary schools, even K and pre-K. We are losing extraordinary people every day. Yes, sir. Yeah, Tammy and Shalashana, I'm just going to, if you don't mind, sir. They're both brilliant, but they're afraid to have a real courageous conversation with one another. Why are they afraid? Uh, I'm, I think they're afraid because they're not sure of what the end would look like, and they may have to say, I'm sorry. I should have done this a long time ago. percent correct. So the reason why we do action learning is so we can actually see inside these situations. We can feel the tension. We can see that these are all good people trying to do their best, but the results are not positive in so many cases. And in this case, this client of ours, this repeated itself every day. They were losing hundreds of great people. So thank you for uh, your attention to this. I hope, it, wait, we have one more comment. Yep, yes, sir. How to fix it. How to fix it. First, you have to have the conversation. 
You have to stop telling yourself and other stories, and you have to start telling yourselves and others the truth about where you are, what you're doing. And eventually, organizations, sometimes when it's far too late, ask us to come in and help them see. Sometimes when it far, and that breaks our hearts. But you have to be able to see it in order to fix it. You have to be able to tell the truth about it in order to approach it. You guys know that. Again, I'm a little over my time, so I thank you all. Give it another round of applause for our fabulous players. I'll just leave that up for a moment, the power of three-dimensional learning, and we'll turn it over to the next speaker.